In this lecture, we will discuss about the Wigner Monte Carlo method in the framework of density functional theory or DFT. Um, we want to use this theory because for practical uh, systems, for practical uh, simulations coming from technology relevant situations, uh, what we want to do usually is to simulate uh, a system which is made not of only a single particle but actually many particles and sometimes this number of particles is very high. So we need to come up with a theory or a, a mathematical framework where we can deal with problems like this. Um, DFT was born, we may say, in 1964. The first paper that was written about this, uh, or let's say the modern DFT as it is known today, was born in 1964. And the first paper was written by Hohenberg and Kohn uh, in that period, and which was about inhomogeneous electron gas. This is basically where they, they put the foundations of modern DFT. Uh, then we have a second paper in 1965, which was written by Kohn and Sham, where essentially you have this, uh, this set of equations, which is now known as a Kohn-Sham equation, which is a set of coupled Schrodinger equation, uh, which can describe to a certain um, level uh, uh, and body quantum problem. Eventually, in 1984, we had this third paper uh, from Runge and Gross, where they uh, put the foundations of a time-dependent DFT, or time-dependent density functional theory. Uh, what we will do in, uh, in, in this lecture is to show the Wigner Monte Carlo uh, method in DFT, uh, which um, simply is um, the counterpart of time-dependent Schrodinger DFT, but in a Wigner formulation of quantum mechanics. Uh, so, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the Kohn-Sham system is essentially a system of, let's say, n-coupled uh, single-body Schrodinger equations. Uh, this is in the case you have n particles. Uh, for example, if you have a molecule uh, where you suppose that the, the the ions are essentially standing still and the only dynamic thing that you have in your system are electrons you may imagine these n uh, particles are as n electrons uh, moving uh, in in this in this framework and what you do is to use this Kohn-Sham system to simulate this this uh, this particular physical system um, in in, um, in practice, what you have is that the coupling is made by this effective potential here, uh, which is uh, in, uh, called also, um, let's say, um, a density functional. And in particular, what you can see here is that this effective functional is described in terms of um, free uh, members here. The first one is given by an external uh, potential, which could be pretty much everything. For example, it could be the potential that is given by or that is produced by the ions in your system. Then here you have essentially what is um, given, let's say, the electro uh, the, um, the um, electrostatic potential, which is due by the electrons and sometimes is referred to as the R3 terms and eventually you have this last term here which is called the exchange correlation potential or also exchange correlation uh, functional because it's a functional defined over the space of densities so given electronic density here you may apply uh, the, the exchange correlation potential and you can give a potential which is defined uh, over a particular point of your space. Uh, this potential here is a potential that is uh, taken from a paper of Cohn. This is not the, the, the um, this is not the only possible choice for an exchange correlation potential. Actually, nowadays you have plenty of options. Uh, this is the one that we will use in the results that we will show at the end of the of this lecture. So now, if you start from the Schrodinger 
equations which are single body Schrodinger equations uh, coming from the Kohn-Sham system, you may think about applying the Wigner-Weil transform to every single Schrodinger equation in the system. And if you do so, you will end up with a, again, with a system of couplet equations which are not uh, Schrodinger equations anymore, but they are the corresponding Wigner equations. So we are starting from, we started from a Kohn-Sham uh, um, systems of Schrodinger equations and by applying the Wigner-Weil uh, transform, we came up with a system of a couplet single body Wigner equations, which is the system that you see in this slide. In particular, what is interesting is that your uh, Wigner kernel here, which is defined here now, depends on the effective potential, where we have seen that the effective potential is defined also in terms of this exchange correlation potential. So essentially the coupling between the single body Wigner equation is still done by means of this exchange correlation potential or exchange correlation um, functional. So in, in, uh, as a matter of fact here you don't see anything different from what is done in the Kohn-Sham system. Uh, you will have exactly the same predictions, you will have the same limitations as you find in DFT. What is interesting here is that if you uh, move to the, the Wigner formulation of quantum mechanics, you may have a more intuitive way of studying your, your molecules, for example. And the, the, also the, the, the most interesting thing is that you have uh, Monte Carlo techniques to solve this, uh, this system of, of a couplet equations, which means that you can have a very deep level of parallelization, which is not the case, for example, in the DFT framework if you are using Schrodinger, coupled Schrodinger equations. So now we will see a bunch of applications, uh, just to show that the method actually works and it's applicable. Um, all of these applications that we will see here are uh, taken from this paper, a Wigner Monte Carlo approach to density functional theory. This is a paper that was published in Journal of Computational Physics very recently. Uh, if you are interested in, the, in, interested in the details, this is the paper that you should read. Uh, you have all details there. We describe the Monte Carlo method, we describe the DFT, we describe what are the modifications we should uh, put, and we describe also the Monte Carlo method in, in um, every single detail. So if you are interested in duplicating these results, this is the paper you should read. In particular here I am reporting the initial conditions of the system. So we will study essentially um, atoms and we will study um, molecules. And the way we do this is usually by imposing some initial conditions which are directly proportional to the, to the density you can calculate from, uh, let's say, the states of hydrogen atoms in the Schrodinger formalism. And this is the way we start. So we essentially we start for something like this and then we let evolve the system. And since we know that these things are uh, directly proportional to the, the, the probability density coming from the states of hydrogen, we know that these things are not so far from a real uh, from the real uh, distribution. So we expect that in very short times this system uh, after some, uh, some uh, interval uh, should um, let's say collapse or should relax to the real solution of the system. So in a sense it's like you have a time dependent system and what you do is you start from some perturbed initial conditions and you relax the whole system until you get to a stationary solution. So the first atom that we actually studied uh, to um, benchmark our uh, suggested method uh, was the lithium atom. Lithium atom is uh, uh, practically very simple. You have only three electrons. Uh, two are in the 1s state, spin up, spin down, and you have a second, uh, you have a third one which is in the 2s state. Uh, so everything is well known there, and we know how the system should behave. 
So for example here you may see this is the potential that is created by the ion of your system which is which has a charge plus free of course and this is uh, the gamma function that you obtain out of this potential just to show it. Um, the interesting thing is that we evolve the system and what we obtain is two electrons in this state that we see here on the left part of the slide and one electron which is in this 2s state here on the right uh, part of the slide. So after some time uh, we realize that the system is essentially relaxing to what we expect and this is a good sign it means that the system is actually working even if you start from let's say non-stationary solution eventually the system uh, relaxes to stationary solution and if you let the system evolve in time what you you observe is that there is no let's say uh, noticeable n noticeable um, change after the the, the the free electrons reach these states um, we then um, we then proceeded with a more complicated atom, which is the boron atom. Boron atom has five electrons. Here, what I report is okay. Again, you see here this is uh, the gamma function coming from uh, the boron atom, uh, or in particular from the boron ion. Uh, the difference between this one and the lithium is that now here we have a plus five charge. So even though the draw here or the plot here it's kind of looks kind of the same as for the lithium, the numbers are actually different. And what is interesting here is that for this particular orbital here, where the shape you can see it's it's quite particular and not so easy to, to simulate. Um, what what we got uh, what we got eventually was that. Uh, our fifth electron is staying in this state here and uh, after some point uh, it doesn't evolve anymore. So we reach a stationary state again and the stationary state looks like exactly what we would expect from a boron atom. So this was a second, um, this was a second um, let's say, reason to believe that this method is actually applicable and also reliable. So you may see the details in the paper. Uh, finally, we decided to do something more exciting, more interesting, which is a H2 molecule. So, and we did this in two different ways. First, we decided to simulate, let's say, two atoms, two hydrogen atoms, but they are far apart. And then we, we decided to simulate the same system uh, to uh, hydrogen atom again, but very close. And what you expect, physically speaking, is that if these atoms are very far apart, there should be no interaction whatsoever with uh, between the two, um, uh, let's say, atoms. While here, you expect to see the formation of a chemical bond. So this is what we, we try to simulate, and this is what we realized. So first of all here I report the gamma functions again and here you can see that now the system uh, is, is quite different if we compare to lithium and boron atoms. In particular here this is uh, the gamma function in the case of two hydrogen atoms which are far apart and this is the gamma function when these hydrogen atoms are very close and you can see that these gamma function from um, in these two systems are very different so you expect that the dynamics will be also very different and essentially this is what we get so if we get if we take two hydrogen atoms which are far apart and every single atom has one single electron and we let them evolve in proximity of their uh, let's say um, counter um, ions here. What we expect is that these two things, these two electrons, eventually collapse to a 1s state, and there is nothing more happening. As a matter of fact, this is what we see here. So this is the two-dimensional density, and here we make a one-dimensional cut of this density, and what we realize is, is essentially these two electrons are just staying in two independent 1s state. 
which is exactly what you expect from physics. So again, this is an indication that the Wigner Monte Carlo DFT method uh, really works. Finally, we have done exactly the same experiment, but with two hydrogen atoms which are very, very close. And again, if we now do a cut, a one-dimensional cut, what we realize here is that we have the formation of a chemical bond. I mean, here you see that this is very, very clear. There is a formation of a chemical bond. And this is exactly what you expect from a reliable DFT method. So this Wigner Monte Carlo method in DFT really works. It's applicable. And the interesting thing is that it's very parallelizable. So if you have a cluster and you want to simulate big molecules, this is the method that you should use. Uh, this completes uh, this lecture. I thank you very much for your attention.